Hey, I'm Stephen and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. The world is on the cusp of a huge disruption and Tesla is leading the way. If you missed the memo, Tesla is a battery and software company. Both of these core technologies go into most of Tesla's products and are key to Tesla's future and what sets them apart. Many people mistakenly believe Tesla is a car company. This is a misread. Yes, today Tesla currently manufactures vehicles, but that's where their similarities with the traditional automaker end. Tesla's mission is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. They're attacking this challenge from multiple directions, transport, energy generation, and energy storage. And that's just for now. Who knows what other avenues the brilliant engineering minds at Tesla will explore as they continue to execute their mission. In this video, ahead of Tesla's battery investor day where I expect we'll hear more, I'm explaining why Tesla batteries will both make and save billions. We'll look at vehicle to grid, big batteries, virtual power plants, and more. As a Tesla investor, this is very exciting. Batteries aren't sexy, so it's easy to overlook Tesla's energy business, but do so at your own peril. Hey guys, we will have a great offer. If you'd like to get a free stock value up to $1,400 and help out the channel, use the link in the description. I mean, free stock? Hello? Declining costs. I'm still astonished at how few Wall Street analysts and members of the finance media acknowledge the declining cost curves being ridden by the two most expensive items in Tesla vehicles. Number one, the battery. And two, in distant second place, the computer. It's difficult not to claw out my eyeballs when I hear statements of world-class ignorance like Tesla will never make a $25,000 car or Teslas are for rich people. All that we need to do is fire up our neurons, look at some data and infer what the future looks like. Today, the battery in a Tesla is roughly $100 per kilowatt hour. E.g., a 100 kilowatt hour battery costs roughly $10,000, but history shows a steady battery cost decline of around 15 to 20 percent per year. Fast forward four years, and that same pack will cost half as much—$5,000 saved, like that. And then there's the self-driving computer. Tesla shocked the world in 2019 by announcing it was ditching Nvidia's chip in favor of one they had designed in-house, which was far superior, 20% cheaper, and incredibly, Tesla also confirmed they were working on its successor at the time. Tesla will continue to find many new cost efficiencies through improved manufacturing processes, vertical integration, economies of scale, etc. As this happens, it's inevitable that the cost to produce their vehicles will fall continually over time, just from the fact that the two most expensive pieces of hardware are riding declining cost curves towards zero. This means either higher margins, lower prices for consumers, or both. Lower prices means a larger market for Tesla vehicles and their stationary battery storage. This is such an important point, I'm going to restate it. The most expensive components in most of Tesla's products are riding declining cost curves. This will expand their market and margins enormously over time. Guess what isn't riding declining cost curves? Internal combustion engines and fossil fuel energy sources. Keep that in mind. Research, innovation, and acquisitions. Tesla isn't standing still. They're an optimization machine. We've seen incredible improvements at every level from corporate structure and factory design to materials and manufacturing processes. Tesla has strategic research partnerships with the likes of Jeff Dorn in relation to a million mile battery. Tesla has shown a willingness to acquire companies such as Maxwell Technologies, who are battery experts, and Highbar Systems, who are experts in battery manufacturing. The point here is simple. Tesla, through their actions, are showing clearly that they are bent on remaining light years ahead of everyone else. In my Battery Invested Day preview video, which I'll link in the description, I made many predictions. The most notable being Tesla will announce plans to manufacture their own battery cells. This will dramatically reduce costs. The key to winning EVs is great software and the best batteries. Tesla has both and shows no signs of slowing down. Software is eating the world. Have you noticed? Software is causing physical things to dematerialize. I used to have a bookshelf full of books, another full of CDs and DVDs. I once owned a stereo system. I also owned a flashlight and a calculator, and a camera, and an encyclopedia, and a dictionary, and a portable CD player. Today, all of these things and more have dematerialized and are easily carried in my pocket on a single device, my smartphone. Take one look at the dash of a Tesla and you'll see 10 million knobs and dials replaced by software and one elegant screen. And now, software is starting to eat our power generation and supply too. Hornsdale Power Reserve. Time for a quick primer in power. This is a simplified example, so don't get your panties in a twist. The electrical grid today is kinda dumb. Power has to be generated on demand. If lots of people arrive at home from work in the summer and crank their air conditioning, power usage, and therefore cost, goes through the roof. 
To meet this demand, a bunch of filthy, expensive Pika plants come on to deliver peak power as it's needed. This made sense before batteries, but we have batteries now, and it's already far cheaper to build renewable energy sources with battery storage than a new fossil fuel power plant. Yes, really. We're at an inflection point. Mark my words, the 2020s are the decade of battery storage. Currently the world's largest lithium-ion battery, the Hornsdale Power Reserve, is a brilliant case study in how Tesla's batteries and software will make and save billions, allowing Tesla to eat the lunch of power plants and utilities the world over. Despite being mocked by Australia's Prime Minister Scott Moore I'm not sure if I said his name correctly. The Hornsdale Power Reserve proved to be a genius move. Basically, a bunch of Tesla batteries were installed to store excess wind power for later distribution and to stabilize the power grid following a devastating blackout. The big battery has made and saved millions and stabilized the grid, stepping in multiple times when needed. Its payback period is estimated to be just four and a half years. Insane. This case study was enough for the world to take notice, and they have. Becoming a distributed global utility, what exactly does this mean? In layman's terms, Tesla will be slowly eating the lunch of utilities around the world. We'll go deeper on this in a moment, but for now, just imagine it's 2030. Tens of millions of homes around the world generate power with Tesla solar and store it with their Tesla Powerwall, collectively saving billions, which also means billions less revenue for utility companies. In many of these locations, more power is generated than is used, so where does this excess power go? Glad you asked. Virtual power plants. South Australia, home to the Hornsdale Power Reserve, is also the location of a pilot program called the South Australian Virtual Power Plant. Currently, just over 1,000 homes out of a proposed 50,000 house solar and a Tesla Powerwall and have opted in to the virtual power plant. Excess energy is stored in batteries and controlled by Tesla's software. Should energy demand spike and the grid find itself in need of power urgently, the virtual power plant kicks in and supplies what is needed. Even at just 2% of its final scale, the South Australian virtual power plant has already kicked in to avoid blackouts and prevent Pika plants firing up, saving millions. Virtual power plants can also perform energy arbitrage, dynamically drawing power when energy costs are low and serving it back during peak periods when costs are high. The potential here is ridiculous. Battery and solar costs are declining. In the future, more and more people will live in homes featuring both, forming virtual power plants and earning a little income for their trouble. Talk about printing money. Actually, speaking of printing money, auto bidder. A few weeks ago, Tesla's auto bidder software became public knowledge. We learned it was controlling the South Australian virtual power plant. Remember in the intro I said Tesla was a battery and software company? Well, Autobidder is a huge software flex from Tesla. Let's read it in their own words. Autobidder provides independent power producers, utilities, and capital partners the ability to autonomously monetize battery assets. Autobidder is a real-time trading control platform that provides value-based asset management and portfolio optimization, enabling owners and operators to configure operational strategies that maximize revenue according to their business objectives and risk preferences. Autobidder is successfully operating at Hornsdale Power Reserve in South Australia and through market bidding has added competition to drive down energy prices. In a nutshell, Shell. If you have big batteries, Tesla's auto bidder can print you money out of thin air, and they don't even need to be Tesla batteries. Pretty cool, huh? Vehicle to grid. And now we get to the juicy part. Vehicle to grid. Imagine if your Tesla could become part of a virtual power plant and earn you a little money. Sounds simple, right? Store energy in your Tesla battery, distribute it to the grid when needed, and get paid for your trouble. The problem is, Charging and discharging lithium-ion batteries causes degradation. Being part of a virtual power plant will dramatically shorten the useful lifespan of your battery due to all the extra charging cycles. Enter the Million Mile Battery. Rumors have now become almost certainty. The lab of Tesla research partner Jeff Dorn appears to have developed a million mile battery. What this really means is a battery that can be charged and discharged repeatedly with very little degradation. Suddenly, the prospect of your Tesla becoming part of a virtual power plant powered by Autobidder is real. Remember. The South Australian virtual power plant with a mere 1,000 batteries, about 2% of its final scale, has proven itself to be as effective as it is lucrative. Imagine a global distributed utility comprised of millions of Teslas, making money for their owners while they sleep. This is another example of Tesla printing billions out of thin air. This is a pure software play. Nothing at all needs to change about the hardware in a Tesla to enable vehicle to grid. It's just a matter of code. Mega pack equals mega revenue. As I said earlier, today, on balance, it's cheaper to build a renewable power plant with battery storage than a fossil fuel plant, and it's better for the environment. Win-win. Tesla's recently released Megapack is a grid-scale battery solution that is seeing increasing demand from large-scale commercial energy users, utilities, and more. When you run the numbers as either of these entities, it's financially insane not to include large-scale battery storage. This was not the case a few years ago, and that's the point. Battery costs are declining over time with no end in sight. 
If it's crazy today not to use batteries, imagine in five years when a mega pack will cost about half what it does today. As for competition, well, in Tesla's own words, at the site level, mega pack requires 40% less space and 10 times fewer parts than current systems on the market. As a result, this high density modular system can be installed 10 times faster than current systems. It's hard to argue with that. Space saved is money saved. Complexity is the devil and time is money. Win, win, win. Don't sleep on Tesla mega pack. Battery recycling, remanufacturing and reuse. So what does a million mile battery really mean? Basically, after 1 million miles driven, or the equivalent numbers of charge-discharge cycles, the battery capacity has degraded close to 10%. Not the end of the world. Your 400 mile range vehicle now gets 360 miles per charge. Should you choose to replace your current battery, what happens to it? Well, throwing it out would be stupid since it holds 90% of its original capacity, but it would make a great option for use in stationary energy storage. This is where recycling comes into play. Companies like Redwood Materials, founded by Tesla's ex-CTO JB Straubel, are moving the needle forward. In the future, we'll see vehicle batteries sold to recycling companies who will remanufacture products like big batteries. Further down the food chain, towards their end of their useful life, batteries will be recycled for the valuable materials they contain. It's too early to tell how this will go down. Will customers selling unwanted batteries make a few dollars or thousands? I don't know. But in either case, the battery recycling market is set to explode as batteries and electric vehicles take over the world. There are billions to be made. The numbers. It wouldn't be a video about making billions without actually looking at some numbers. So let's do exactly that. Keep in mind, these are just back of the napkin examples so you have a template to work with in your mind. I pulled them from my ass. Use your own numbers. I'm making a point, not a prediction. We know that Tesla sells at least one power wall to 40% of its solar customers. Tesla is aiming to reach production of over 10,000 solar glass roofs per week. This doesn't include solar panels. Call it 500,000 per year. If 40% of those customers buy a power wall, that's 200,000 power walls at $6,500 each. 1.3 billion in revenue per year just from solar customers who also buy a power wall. Then we have the mega pack whose demand is already outstripping supply. This is where I see most of Tesla's energy storage revenue coming from in the near term. Mega pack pricing is a mystery to me. If anyone knows anything, let me know in the comments. Keep in mind, Tesla quotes per customer based on their needs, setup and installation. A mega pack stores well over 200 times as much energy as a power wall. Let's assume a mega pack costs 100 times as much as a power wall. That's $650,000 per mega pack. If Tesla sells 2,000 mega packs per year, that's another 1.3 billion in revenue. Then what about Tesla's cut of virtual power plants, vehicle to grid, and auto bidder software? Again, I have no numbers to work with, but we do know Tesla's vehicle fleet today is over 1 million, and they've installed over 100,000 power walls. Let's imagine 1 million instances in which Tesla takes a cut of vehicle to grid, virtual power plants, etc. And say that cut is $25 a month. That's another $300 million per year in revenue. But what about the money Tesla saves and makes for these customers? We've seen insane returns on the Hornsdale Power Reserve and the incredible impact of South Australia's virtual power plant on the back of Tesla's auto bidder software. And it's early days. And what about recycling? Again, this is an unknown, but someone in the future will want to buy your Tesla battery for use in stationary storage. I hope in this video, I've shown that Tesla's batteries, coupled with their software expertise, will make billions for Tesla and billions for Tesla's retail and commercial customers by enabling vehicle to grid, virtual power plants and insane energy arbitrage. Everyone wins. Tesla, its customers and the planet. Tesla's batteries and software are hidden in the background but destined to make billions. The auto bidder software alone could bring in billions of annual profits for Tesla by helping those with energy storage monetize their battery assets, never mind the revenue on the sale of Tesla's own batteries. Once again, I must reiterate, battery costs are declining over time. Cheaper batteries equals a bigger market and a faster payback time. Today, it's already cheaper to build a renewable energy plus battery storage combo than a traditional fossil fuel plant, and it's only getting cheaper. Fossil fuels are fucked. Pico plants are dead. Utilities are being disrupted. Energy generation and storage is being democratized, and Tesla looks poised to become the world's largest distributed utility. This matters. And don't forget your free stock with Weeble, guys. Link in description. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you agree or disagree with any points? What do you think about auto bidder, virtual power plants, Tesla's battery business, and the future of energy grids? And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. This channel has kind of blown up since it launched, and I'm working on making the best possible content for you guys, but it takes time. Consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can continue creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description.
And you can now also become a member of the channel to get some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching, so thanks again. By all means, have the world's biggest battery, have the world's biggest banana, have the world's biggest prawn, like we have on the roadside, along the highways, around the country. But that's not solving the problem. This big battery is already playing a key role in stabilising the grid. And it's doing so with a speed, precision and agility that's never been seen before.